some of Singapore's most complex infrastructure is hidden in plain sight. Like this MRT entrance, tucked between buildings in the city centre. Step inside and you're heading 43 metres underground into a network that moves more than 3 million people a day. So what does it take to build a station this deep and keep it running every day? Singapore's Mass Rapid Transit, or MRT, has been moving people since 1987. It launched with just five stations on the North-South Line. A bold new system designed to ease congestion. Well, here we are on the first MRT train, the first batch of passengers, all of us eagerly waiting to experience the thrill of the first ride. And yes, we're off. In the early years, most lines ran above ground. But as the city grew denser, the network had to go underground, beneath roads, buildings and even rivers. Ben Coolen took that shift underground even further, 43 metres down. Bencoolen station is actually one of 16 stations under the Downtown Line 3 contract. It is also one of the most difficult stations to be constructed, primarily because it's in the middle of the central business district area. And actually there's a very small slice of land which is available only for the station entrance. So we had to figure out a way where we wanted to put the station. That challenge fell to Aslan, the architect behind Bencoolen station. Above ground, space was already tight. Underground, it was even trickier. Wedged between Fort Canning and Jalan Besar, the tunnels had to pass through one of the city's most complex underground zones, layered with intersecting train lines, utilities and dense urban infrastructure. What happens is that the station's tunnels needs to thread through between two very important junctions. One of the junctions is at Sungai Road with Bangkulun Street, where you have, clearly have the Sungai Road River and you have the lines from the northeast line and also the lines from the second line as well. And to the north at Fort Canning, we also have the lines coming from the Bigot Station, which also serve the north-south line and also the second line as well. With so much already built beneath the city, there was only one option, go deeper. At the time of construction in 2011, most stations were just 15 to 25 metres underground. This was Singapore's deepest yet. Once the depth was set, a new problem emerged. How do you move thousands of people up and down the equivalent of a 15-storey building every day. It's not easy to actually get people to move vertically up and down from the surface level to the deepest levels where your train platform could be. We had to make sure that this requirement to make people move in and out of the station safely, efficiently and safely is met. So the team had to carefully design how people move through the station, step by step. At Ben Coolen, that meant 22 escalators linking street level to the platform. The thing about escalators is this, it's a little bit peculiar. Escalators work efficiently when the maximum height is 6 metres. Escalators work best at an incline of around 30 degrees. Any steeper and they're harder to step on safely. Any longer and they need more space, structure and power. At this depth, Every angle counts. Some of our stations would have longer escalators. Space is just available for them to do it. But here is a compact station, and we really need to work with the optimal vertical line for escalators. But systems alone aren't enough. Someone needs to manage flow in real time. People, platforms and systems. Um, how do I go to Gardens by the Bay? Right now we're here in Bengkulen. 
Okay, you'll take five stations on the blue line right now where we're at Bayfront. At Ben Coolen, that's Stacey. Attention passengers, please do not eat or drink in our stations and trains. From the Passenger Service Centre, she keeps a close eye on the station. We not just deal with passengers looking for help, we also make sure that the system is running smoothly. So we have to have, I suppose you would say dual vision. So whatever is happening outside the Passenger Service Centre and whatever is happening inside, we have to be aware at all times. With multiple levels and escalators, even finding the platform can be confusing, especially for tourists. My hotel. The Mi Hotel. Okay, so what you can do is you go out by here. Thank you. All right, have a good day. Ben Kulin sees a steady stream of them with several hotels nearby. Sometimes they will go in and they'll go downstairs, maybe one escalator, and they'll come back upstairs again. Where are the trains? Even with cameras and monitors, not everything can be seen from behind the glass. That's why Stacy walks the ground. If someone looks unsure, she's often there before they ask. Hey, Uncle, where do you want to go? During the day, Station staff like Stacy keep things on track. ASM Stacy to ASM Joburn, everything is normal on the platform over. But once the last train pulls out, the last train is really when the last is Another shift begins behind the scenes. So today we'll be doing PSD maintenance three and six monthly. So for the protection. Platform side. screen doors do more than open and close. They form a safety barrier and help ensure trains stop precisely, keeping timing and boarding smooth. Behind each one is a system of components that need to work in sync. Tonight, technicians are testing alignment, checking response time and looking for faults before they happen. It's routine maintenance. But in a deep station where access takes time, there's little room for error. Further up, fare gates are opened and inspected. Technicians check sensors, motors and barrier timing, ensuring every tap-in and tap-out works as expected. In a vertically stacked station like this, smooth flow depends on every part working reliably. Just as important as maintenance is the design that shapes how it feels to move underground. But I think for a deep station, you'd like to linger around it longer. You want to create that sense of delight. At Ben Coolen, that experience is shaped through thoughtful choices. We wanted to figure out, look, is there any way you can make this feel like you're actually going deep underground? And the colours that was chosen, in fact, was this shade of orange, primarily to reflect the styrations of the earth as you dig lower and lower into the ground. That's why you get deeper and deeper and deeper colours. It's not just colour that guides you. The station walls curve to reveal what's ahead, making the descent feel more intuitive. Because if you have a vertical wall and then you have escalators coming from both banks, as you try to look over the handrails of the escalator, you can't actually see what's happening downstairs. And if you're down at the bottom, you can't actually see upstairs. So the curvature of the station walls actually allow for passengers to get a sense of where they are going to and where they're coming from. Even the lift doors were designed with depth in mind. Wouldn't it be delightful if you don't have the lift walls to be clear, transparent? What if we do something a little bit more crimson, reddish kind of thing, like we're actually going to the depths of the earth? So that's where you had ended up with, I think, one of the few stations in Singapore where we have actually have coloured glass lift doors. It's very subtle. You may not notice these details during a morning rush, but that's the point. When a station is well-designed, 
the journey feels seamless. Most of us pass through a station like this without thinking twice. But what feels routine is the result of engineering, design and daily care. Station staff manage flow. Then go and out, over. Technicians carry out overnight checks. And architects shape how people move, even deep underground. Ben Coolen reflects how the MRT has evolved from running mostly above ground to operating deeper, built around the needs of a growing city.